Speaking of Dak, will Dak be here for the long term? Do you think he gets the, his next biggest and maybe the last biggest contract? I don't think it'll be last. Um at the very least, in, in terms of his time in the NFL, maybe the third extension won't be with Dallas. I mean, just given everything to this point. But, um, I mean, he's only 31 years old. And yeah. and I would offer that this next one will probably be, you know, the, the, the reports from a, a few months ago were that it might be in the three-year variety, which would certainly set him up for another potential, you know, kind of bite at the apple. Um, but I do think this ultimately gets done. I think that the Cowboys, beyond their incompetence here, are extraordinarily fortunate that CD is the only one holding out because Dak could totally hold out if you wanted to. Micah could hold out if you wanted to. It, it is an, an incredibly fortuitous thing for Dallas that CD is the only one choosing not to be at training camp right now. And they have already benefited from the grace of Dak Prescott and that he's, this is the third time, at least the third, you know, middle of August that they are pushing Dak into a contract year. They did it in 2019, the final year of his rookie deal. They obviously sent him into his franchise tag season in 2020, the one where he was injured. And they were on the verge of doing it in 2021 before the July 15th deadline when they negotiated the deal that he's currently on. So you're talking about three times now that they have sent him into the summer on the final year of, a, of his contract with the team. And not just, this isn't, you know, no disrespect to Kyler Murray, but to use him as an example, this isn't a number one overall pick that has disappointed relative to expectation. Sure. This is a, a fourth round lotto ticket that has been a dream ambassador for you off of the field is, is a remarkable human being on top of being a highly productive player who finished second in MVP voting last year. And, and again, he's coming off of his best statistical individual yep. season as well. So it, it is, extremely difficult to justify their positioning here maybe you put some level of stock into well you can't get it done to the playoffs if you're somebody like that but i would offer can josh allen get it done in the playoffs can justin herbert get it done in the playoffs can you know whatever the case may be we can go round and round and round here so i do think this ultimately gets done i think that they they still believe they can win whether it's it's years, whether it's guaranteed money, whether it's whatever, but it's also worth mentioning, and I, I'm sorry to be long-winded on these things, that they lost in every single capacity <laughs> when it came to the last extension. They lost on the time length they wanted. They lost in the guaranteed money. They lost on the annual average value. And the, the lesson that they can't understand is people say things like, you can't give Dak $60 million a year. You just can't do it, whatever. The, the verbiage was, you can't give him $40 million three years ago. And I mean, now $40 million, like yeah. that is chump change for, yeah. for a franchise quarterback. And that's hand. that's yeah. what this will ultimately become. And there's they're so unwilling to trust that, that that at some point you have to be the one to set the market, and that soon enough everybody will fall in line behind you. Yeah, because isn't he, I believe, isn't he like the last quarterback waiting for a contract? I'm not sure there might be another one out there, but they let everybody beat him this this offseason and now preseason period. Jared Goff obviously got his bag from Detroit. Trevor Lawrence got it from Jacksonville. Yeah. Jordan Love in Green Bay and even two obviously in Miami. Yeah, so just... and and at wide receiver they've let everybody beat them. Now some of those were uh, maybe a tier below the Devontae Smith, the Jalen Waddle, those deals, you know, th those were never price points that CD was going to agree to. Um, but they let the Justin Jefferson deal get done. The only one that's lingering that they could beat still is the Jamar Chase deal. But, and I suppose Brandon Ayuk, if you think that he's ultimately going to touch CD Lane money. Okay. All right. Wow. Uh, a lot going on. Big surprise. And maybe like you said, it does make a lot of sense that this is uh, just what Jerry wants. So us talking about this for the first 15 minutes instead of just talking about the, the rest of the team. But uh, anyway, and, and you would think that at some point that if they weren't satisfied or they were questioning whether or not Dak might not be here, that they would have drafted a quarterback at some point in the second round, third round, fourth round, just in case. And there's they, nobody. They don't have. I mean, I don't think they think Cooper Rush is the answer. So Trey Lance. Well, I would, I would offer that people think and, and suggest that Trey Lance is the answer. At least they did before Sunday's preseason outing against the Rams. <laughs> um, but the difficulty, if, even if you want to to wander down that that trepid path, is that this is the final year of Trey Lance's rookie contract. So even if you presume that they go through the whole season and that Dak walks in free agency to the Raiders or the Giants, or the Titans or whoever, now you've sat down with Trey Lance who. 
understands and knows that he's your only option. Like, now he's got leverage. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not quite the same leverage, but sure. it's it's the same level of stupidity in assigning yeah. it, it, which is what they're guilty of over and over and over again, whether it's Dak and CD now, Micah in the future, Demarcus Lawrence in the past, um, Zeke Elliott when he forced it, Zach Barton a year ago when he forced it. They, they just have an inability to get ahead of these things the way that other front offices are.